I'll begin with a word of prayer. So, here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this day. I thank you again uh, for these students. I just ask that you just bless our work today. Help us to glorify you in what we do and to uh, enjoy the break, which is about to start, Lord. In my prayer, Lord Jesus. Amen. So did you guys figure out how to solve these? Did you guys know? What method do you want to use? We got two reasonable choices and one unreasonable choice. I would say the unreasonable choice is graphical, right? Like, I don't want to solve these with graphing. That would be a pain. So either I'm going to use substitution or I'm going to use elimination. Um, but I think I'm going, to do, I'm going to do elimination in here because I don't think I've done that yet. So um, to eliminate a variable, what can we do here? How about this? We add these equations, right? If we add these two equations, what happens? We get 5x, the y's cancel, equals to what? 15. So x equals 2? 15 over 5, also known as 3. That's half of it. Now the solution, right? It should be a pair of numbers that when we plug it in, it makes both equations true, right? So what happens here? Um, I need to find y. Which one should I use? How about y is equal to what? 3x plus y equals to 7, but x is equal to 3, right? So this gives me 9 plus y equals to 7, which tells me y is 7 minus 9. y is equal to minus 2. So my solution is a pair, and it's the following pair. It's 3 comma minus 2. There you go. Now, how about this next problem? How should we solve the next one? What do you guys think? Substitution? Okay, sure. Why, let, let, let's do it. So, how are you going to? What, what's your substitution going to be? Oh. Oh, see, what you're describing is elimination. That's fine, though. So, we'll do what you said. I'm just going to trade you. Uh, this is elimination. So, multiply by minus two. Or multiply by 2, right? I get minus 2x plus 8y equals to 0. If I multiply this equation by 2, I'm just going to rewrite the top one. 2x plus 3y equals to 10, right? I mean, that's a perfectly legitimate thing you're suggesting. You just had the wrong name for it. No big deal. Um, on that point, um, your homework your homework has problems where they say, solve this problem with substitution or solve this problem with elimination, right? I don't really much care whether you use substitution or elimination. I just want you to be able to solve the problem, right? So if you're more comfortable with elimination than you are with substitution, that's fine. You just need to make sure you own one of those methods entirely. I think the best practice in here is to know a little bit of both. Like they're both good methods and you should be able to use them sort of in combination, in tandem. That's for best, but um, you know, anyway, so we add these, the 2 and minus 2x cancels, we get 11y equals to 10, so apparently y is equal to 10 elevenths, yeah? And what's x? I go back up to here, right? x is equal to 4y, so that's 4 times 10 over 11, also known as 40 over 11, right? So my solution is 40 over 11, comma 10 over 11. Does that make sense? Now, I probably would have solved example two differently than that. Maybe, I mean, like example two, there's another way we could do it. Something called this example two tilde. It's the same example, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. So like, notice, so let me, let me just label these equations one and equation two, right? Notice that equation two gives, you know, what? It gives us x is equal to 4y, right? Agree? So since that's true, then we can plug that in. Plug it into one. We get two times x, well, x is 4y plus 3y equals to 10, which gives me 11y equals to 10, 
which gives me y is equal to 10 over 11. And then, of course, I can go back and say, and then x is equal to 4 times y, which is 4 times 10 over 11, which is 40 over 11. So the second method that I just used, this is called substitution, right? Substitution is when you solve for one of the variables and then plug it into the other equation, all right? Where are we good? Yeah. Here, let's, let me work another one in here that's a little bit different if I can find my, my problems. Um, let's see here. Example three. Maybe we come up against three uh, y equals to five x plus fifteen, and x plus y equals to five. All right. So this is this is my number sixteen from week three. Yeah. I'm supposed to solve this thing. All right. So how should we uh, how should we solve this? What do you guys think? First of all, it's not in like the usual format, right? Like, it's not in the standard form. I don't have variables on one side and numbers on the other, right? So it's a little bit odd, but it's not a problem necessarily. We can still solve it. I think substitution is the way to go here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call. I mean, this is equation one. This is equation two. I'm going to solve two for y equals to five minus x, right? Then I'll plug, let me give this a name, star. I'll plug star into one. That gives me three times five minus x equals to five x plus 15. What does that give me? See, I get 15 minus 3x equals to 5x plus 15. Oh, that's neat. The 15s cancel, right? And that gives us what? 8x equals to 0. So apparently, x equals to 0. Then what's y equal to? So you can use, e yeah, y is equal to 5, right? So from 2, we get, you know, x plus y equals to 5, which tells me in this context, 0 plus y equals to 5. So therefore, y is 5, right? So what's my solution? Solution. The solution is 0 comma 5. Would you like to see another? Let's look at a not yet another example. This example four. Um, here I'm facing 4x minus 3y equals to 25 and 3x plus 4y equals to minus 25. Now this one, and we're told to use elimination in the instructions, so I'm going to do that as a kind of an example of um, a slightly ugly problem. It's not too bad, but here's the thing. is like when you, elimination is easiest, right? When, when you can line things up and cancel things out, right? But nothing really, nothing really matches here, does it? <laughs> Do you see the problem with this current example we're facing? Like it's not, nothing, nothing naturally cancels out, right? I got three and four and you know, what to do. So here's what we're going to do. We'll call this equation one, call this equation two. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at, we're going we're gonna to multiply the first equation by three, and we're going to multiply the second equation by four. And see, if I do that, then I'm going to make the equations match up. See how that, go, see how that works? 
So like 3 times the first equation gives me 12x minus 9y. What's 3 times 25? I think it's 75, right? 75. Multiply the second equation by 4. 3 times 4. Again, 12x, right? Um, plus 16y equals to minus 100. So basically, my, my, the, the idea here, the technique, if you will, is you want to, you know, multiply the equations by numbers to make them match up. So that's kind of vague language, but see, you could either try to match up the uh, coefficients of x, or you could try to match up the coefficients of y. Um, I just I chose to make the x's match up because it just that's what jumps out to me. All right. Now, why did I do that? Because after I do that, now what can we do? We can eliminate x, right, by su by subtracting the equations. See. Now, if I subtract these equations. Like so, 12x minus 12x is 0, minus 9y um, minus 16y is minus 25y, and what's 75 minus a minus 100? Well, that's, that's 175. So what's y equal to? Apparently y is equal to 175 divided by minus 25, which is also known as minus 7. So y is equal to minus 7. What's x equal to? Well, I mean, we can go back. We can use, you know, either one of the equations, right? So let's use the second one. 3x plus 4y equals to minus 25. That tells me 3x minus 28 equals to minus 25, which tells me 3x is equal to 3, which tells me x is equal to 1. So I put this all together. My solution is 1 comma minus 7. So we've got elimination and we got substitution. These are, these are our, our chief weapons. Now, oh, here's another. Let me work this problem with fractions just to be friendly to you guys. Because we haven't, this one, this one might, this one might cause you some, some consternation if I didn't give you a hint here. So maybe it's worth our time here. Number 19 is like this. So here you've got 7x minus 1 over 5 plus y plus 16 over 6 equals to minus 27. And we've got x plus 2 over 4 minus x minus y, all divided by 5, equals to 1. So it's, it, it gives us some advice here. It says, first, clear the denominators. How do you clear the denominators for this problem? What's that even mean, clear the denominators? So what that means is we need to multiply the equations by a number, which makes the fractions, fractions disappear, right? So you guys tell me, what should I multiply equation 1 by? What should I multiply equation 2 by in order to make them nicer? 30 and 20. Very good. So 30 times, times 1 gives me 6 times 7x minus 1 plus 5 times y plus 16. See, because 30 over 5 is 6, but 30 over 6 is 5, right? So I get a, a cancellation like that. When I multiply by 20 on equation 2, I get, you know, um, tell you what, I'll, I'll write it out this time. Eh, that's not 5. I'll write it out to the side. 5 times x plus 2 minus 4 times x minus y. So if you guys don't understand what I'm doing there, let me just expand on it over here. That's 20 times x plus 2 over 4 minus 20 times x minus y over 5, right? So you see, this is why I put a, this is why I put a 5 here, right? 
5 here because 20 over 4 is 5, right? And there's a minus 4 there because minus 20 over 5 is minus 4. See, that's where these numbers are coming from. And the same story for the, uh, the other equation, right? Like 30 over 5 is 6. 30 over 6 is 5. That's why I have those numbers. I guess I should probably take care of the other side, right? Oh, wowzers. Ouch. Ouch. Well, minus 27, I mean, I, I, it's, it's minus 27 times 30. So, yeah, that's a, that's a number. And um, 20 times 1, that's easier. I can do that one in my head. Okay, so then what? Then I suggest that we take these equations and we clean them up a bit, yeah? So basically, like, collect, collect like terms, put all your numbers on the other side. Let's see here. So this gives me 42x um, plus 5y equals to, you know, minus 27 times 30 um, plus 6 minus 5 times 16. 5 times 16 is um, 80. So, yeah, that's the first equation. The second one here, I get myself a 5x. Oh, but 5, I, I, let, me do it, let me do my math in my head here. 5 minus 4x, that just gives me x, right? And then I've got minus minus gives me plus 4y. What's my numbers? I've got 20 minus 10. Yeah, that's it. All right, so let me work out the math here. So 20 minus 10 is 10. I can do that. Let me get my calculator to do the other ones so I don't make a stupid mistake. All right, what do we got? 27 times 30. If I didn't make a mistake, I got minus 884 over here. All right. Okay, so let's call these, let's call these equations that we just found. Let's give them names. Let's call them equations 3 and equations 4. All right, equation three and equation four. How should I proceed? How do I solve these? Now that we made them pretty. What do you guys think? I, I personally think substitution is the way to go here, right? Because I can easily solve the second equation for x. You see that? So like the second equation, I mean, but the fourth, equation four, right? Equation four implies that x is equal to 10 minus 4y, right? Then plug this into, plug it into equation 3. And what do we get? We get 42 times 10 minus 4y plus 5y equals minus 884. So we work that out. It gives me 420. Minus 4 times 42, which is ugh, 168, minus 168y plus 5y equals minus 884, which gives me minus 163y equals to minus 884 minus 420, which gives me y is, you consult my calculator again there before I make a dumb mistake. What is 884 plus 420? 1304. So I get minus 1304 divided by minus 163. <laughs> That's 8. <laughs> so y is equal to 8, all right? <laughs> it's kind of funny. y equals 8. And then what's, what's x equal to? x is equal to 10 minus 4 times y, right? But that's 10 minus 4 times 8, which is 10 minus 32, 
which is minus 22. So my answer is minus 22 comma 8. That problem is kind of tough, right? It's a little bit harder than the other ones we did so far, isn't it? Let me check my answer here. Yep, that was what it was. All right, so this is two equations and two unknowns. So you, there's a few more of them in the homework. I, I hope I've showed you enough that you can do them for yourself, right? But there's more, all right? There's more. So um, let me just take a second here to write the general problem out for us. Like, what's, what's the general problem of um, solving equations? Yeah? Like, what does is, what is an, what is an arbitrary linear system look like? Let me just, just indulge me here for just a second to write something which is a little bit um, abstract, all right? Uh, so the, if we talk about m, m equations and n unknowns, we, we need a lot of numbers to set up the coefficients of that, all right? So like um, m, as in mommy, in n unknowns, n as in nanu nanu, looks like this, A11x1 plus A12x2 plus dot 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 plus A1nxn equals to B1. Then you've got A21x2 plus A22x2 plus dot 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 plus A2nxn equals to B2. This goes on m fold times. Finally you get to the mth one, m is in mommy, am1x1 plus am2 x2 and so forth and so on until eventually you get to a um, amn xn equals to bm. So this is what m linear equations in n unknown looks like, all right? So it turns out that that problem can be solved in the same way that the three problems we saw at the start of last class. There's either a unique solution, there's no solution, or there's infinitely many solutions. Still the case, right? Now, I'm not going to tell you how to solve that in here in general. Um, although, actually, I'm, I'm, for what it's worth, you can solve this by looking at what's called the reduced row echelon form of the following matrix. A11, A12, dot, 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 A1n, and then the last column you put your Bs, B1, B2, um, so if you, if you look at this matrix, so this is called a M by n plus 1 matrix. If you put this into a calculator and you calculate what's called the reduced row echelon form, and that thing I just wrote down is the quote unquote augmented coefficient matrix, then by looking at that you can read the answer off. All right? Um, and I'll show, you an, I'll show you a website which will do it. All right? And um, so, you know, this is a, a, a technique if you have a calculator, if you have like a TI-84 or higher, it'll do this, all right? Um, the graphing, the good graphing calculators will do this. You're like, we run a lot of graphing calculators. I know. I'm just telling you that if you run up against systems of equations in other classes and your professor doesn't care about the algebra, there is like a nice calculator way to solve these, okay? And that's this. But <clears throat> I'm not going to ask you to learn that. That's just for your information, all right? So let's look at... Three, so like all I'm going to ask you to solve in here are these ones, like we've already done, and also three equations and three unknowns. So example six would be one of those. And um, so here we go. Example six. So um, this one's like super nice, all right? Like this one works out really, really nice. So this, this, this problem is almost too easy. This problem is easier than the one we just worked, despite the fact it's three equations and three unknowns. Just because the way it's set up, there's so much 
things, there's so many things that will just cancel if you just add equations judiciously. It's just nice, this, this problem. For me, this is number 23. All right. So here we have three equations and three unknowns. How do you solve it? Like it's pretty much the same thing we've been doing. You can either use substitution or elimination. And the goal is to eliminate variable or variables. So do you guys see anything we can do here with equations one, two, and three? So the answer here should be a triple. X, Y, Z will be the answer. We need to find a number for X, a number for Y, and a number for Z that when we plug it in, all three of these equations are true. All right? Any ideas? What should I do? Hmm. We could be lazier. Try again. I, 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 I take your eliminate Z and I raise you. How about we eliminate Y and Z? Which, how can we do that? Yeah, this one, if we add the second and the third equations, something really magical happens. When we do that, see that? the y and the minus y and the z and the minus z cancel and we're just left with 3x equals to 15 minus 6 also known as 9 so therefore x equals to 3 now that's that's magical that does not usually happen with these that's why I said this example is like really really nice in the sense it's too easy now how do I what do I how do I go from there now let's do what you said you said add equations um, 1 and 2 right so if we add equations 1 and 2, what happens? We get 3x plus 2y. The z's cancel, right? Equals to 3 minus 6, which is minus 3. But the thing is, we already know that x is equal to 3, right? So we can take that, plug it in here, and that gives us 9 plus 2y equals to minus 3, which gives us 2y is equal to minus 12, which gives us y, is minus 6. Then what? Then you can't go wrong, right? Pick any of the three original equations that you like, and you can figure out what z is, right? So you, you guys pick. Which one do you want me to use, 1, 2, or 3? So 1, x plus y plus z equals to 3, but what was x? x was 3, what was y? y was minus 6, z we don't know yet, right? And so solving that gives me z, the 3's cancel, right? Three equal, z equals 6. So my solution is 3 uh, minus 6, 6. See, that wasn't too bad. I would argue that this problem is actually easier than example five, right? Example five was a pain. This is friendlier, actually, despite the fact it's three equations and three unknowns. The next problem is not as friendly. All right. So let me show you an unfriendly example of three equations and three unknowns. And let me hazard a, um, see, I don't, well, I'm going to try. We'll see how if, if I can put it into words or not. I, 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 I didn't even attempt it last class, so I'm not sure it's going to work this class. But I'm, I'm going to try it out here. Can I write for you a, a technique for solving three equations and three unknowns, all right? So let me, let me state the problem here to start with, though, so you can think about it as I'm thinking about my technique question. Here it is. So 4x plus 3y plus z equals minus 17 and then x minus 3y plus 2z equals to minus 4 and 11x minus 2y plus 3z equals minus 37. All right. Am 
All right, so let me, let me suggest a, a technique. And this is just a, um, a possible, possible roadmap, okay? And again, like, by all means, ignore this, ignore this technique if you come across something that's easier. Like example six, there was beautiful cancellations that are just in our face, right? So basically the goal is to eliminate a variable. All right, so let, let me say this. So let's take, let's call this equation one, two, and three. So here's, here's, my, here's my roadmap. Number one, um, you know, adjust one and two as to eliminate z. Also adjust 2 and 3 as to eliminate z. All right. And let's say that to take the resulting equation in x and y from, um, from one equations and solve for x and y. All right, so let me, let me try to put that into practice here. Let me put some meat on the bones here, so to speak. So how do I eliminate z from 1 and 2? Like, how about this? I take equation 1, I multiply it by 2, right? So 2 times equation 1 gives me 8x plus 6y plus 2z. Why did I multiply equation 1 by 2? Do you see it? It's to make this 2z match up with the given 2z in, in equation 2, right? Now what? How do I eliminate z? Oh yeah, well you could do that. Or we could just subtract, right? So like subtract these equations, then the z's are gone, right? Now you're right, I could have alternatively if I had it multiplied by minus 2 instead, then I could add here, right? If instead of multiplying by 2, I'd multiply by minus 2, then we'd be adding instead of subtracting, you know? So you got, you got flavor choices there. But 8 minus, seven, eight minus 1 is 7x, and 6 minus 3 is mi uh, ugh, plus 9y. The z's cancel, right? And minus 34 plus 4 is uh, minus 30. All right? So let me call this equation 4. All right, and we're just going to save that. Hold on to that one, all right? That's half of step number one. I just, I just did this. Check, all right? That's four. Now I want to adjust two and three to eliminate z. How do I do that? That's kind of like my example five, right? Well, not five. It's kind of like the example four I've erased, the one where we had to multiply the one by three and the other by four to make the 12 happen, remember? So this is kind of like that. To make the z terms match up, I should multiply 2 by 3, and I should multiply 3 by 2 in order to get matching z terms. So multiplying by 3, I get 3x minus 9y plus 6z equals to minus 12. And uh, multiplying by 2 gives me 22x um, minus 4y plus, what was I, multiplying by 2, right? 6z equals to, oh, what's 3 times, 2 times 37? 74, right? Minus 74. And um, if I'd been smarter, I would have multiplied one of them by a negative so we could just add instead of subtract here, but I didn't, so we're stuck with it. Right? So now I take these equations, I subtract them to make the z terms eliminate 
3 minus 22 is oh, minus 19x. Uh, minus 9 minus a minus 4 is, min is, is minus 5y. The z's be canceling. And minus 12 minus a minus 74 is really 74 minus 12, which is 62, I believe. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. This is equation 5. We're going to label it equation 5, right? So at this point, I have achieved the second bit of my instruction, all right? And you see what we've earned? Now we've earned our way to two equations and two unknowns. But we already know how to solve that, right? The first five examples today, we did this. So now we're back to that again. So how do we solve equation four and five? You can either use elimination or we can use substitution. Um, I think I'll use elimination um, because it's kind of more symmetric with what I've been doing. So to make the y terms match up, I'm going to multiply equation 4 by 5. 5 times equation 4. 5 times equation 4 is going to give me 35x plus 45y equals to minus 150. And then, um, let's see, to get, to get the 45 from equation 5, I should multiply that by what? 9, right? So 9 times equation 5. Um, and look at this. We're going to have plus minus this time. We, we'll, we'll get to add equations finally, right? Um, so 9 times equation 5. 9 times 19. Uh, 90 plus 81. 171. Minus 171x. Um, minus 45y equals to 9 times 62 which is 620 minus 62, which is... Uh, 558, I guess. I don't know. I better check that. Sometimes I need more RAM. 9 times 62, 558. Woohoo! Alright, now having massaged equations 4 and 5 to make them align, we can eliminate y. So it took us a little bit of work to eliminate z. Um, now we can eliminate y. We've got um, 35. Yeah, i got to see the numbers. See here. I don't want to think. Uh, minus 136 x equals 2. 558 minus 150, 408. So what's x equal to? x is equal to 408 divided by minus 136, which is what? 3. Four oh eight. Come on, stupid fingers. Yeah, three. That's three. Well, minus three because of the minus. And now what? <laughs> so now we got our x. That took us a little bit, but we finally found one third of the solution. X equals minus three. Hooray! So then, we go back to either equation four or five, and we can find y, right? So, like, which one do you guys want to use? Um, I don't know. I guess I like this, the number 4. So, 7x seven, seven plus 9y equals to minus 30 tells me that minus 21 plus 9y equals to minus 30, which tells me 9y is equal to minus 9. So, that tells me y is minus 1. What's z? I can go back to uh, the one of the original equations, right? Like the equation one is nice. See, it says 4x uh, plus 3y plus z is equal to minus 17. Let's use that one. So we know x is minus 3, so plug that in. We get minus 12 
Um, are, are, are they're both negative? Okay, they're both negative. Minus 12 minus 3 plus z equals minus 17, which says z is equal to, I believe that's a minus 17 plus 15, which is minus 2. So solution is minus 3 minus 1 minus 2. Gulp. Phew, that is what's in the, the answer key. All right, good. Great, googly moogly. So I got stuck on this one last class, and I think you can see why. Because last class, I just tried to work this on the fly without a, without a plan. I just tried to kind of, oh, I'm just going to add these equations and combine it. And you can try that, and you may find your way out of the jungle, but you might get lost, right? So if you follow this template, you can solve any of these by this kind of strategy. But it is often much, much faster to just add equations if there's something nice, all right? Um, where are we? Ah, good, still have time. Let me show you how we would have solved this one with technology, all right? So um, what I need to do, I, I need to re preserve this problem. And so what I want to do is I'm going to show you how we could have solved that problem. I'm going to rewrite just the, um, I'm going to rewrite this problem as a matrix problem, okay? So as a matrix, this one looks like, here's the coefficient matrix, for example, 7. You go 4, 3, 1, d -d 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 minus 17, 1, minus 3, 2, uh, minus 4, and 11, minus 2, 3, minus 37. Now, I, I used to do this matrix stuff in college algebra. We could do it here. Um, I'm just not doing it because I thought it's just a little bit cramped this semester, the way the schedule is, and I thought I'm just going to show you guys how to solve equations without the matrix notation. But I think it's important for you to see the matrix notation for your reference. <coughs> and also because it gives you a nice way to like find the answers to your homework problems if you want to check them. You're like, you mean you're showing me how to do my homework problem without doing the steps? Yes, I am. Does that mean that's what you should do? Probably not. I'm really, sh I'm, I'm, uh, I'm foolishly showing you something that you can check your work with. I don't mean to, I don't mean to replace your work with this because then you won't, listen, the only way you can get good at these is to just try them and try them, all right? Like that's the only way, unfortunately. Um, as far as I know, given current medical technology. Um, the top hat is one three 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 three. One three three three. So um, let me show you guys something. We go to my website. All right, and. Um, so if you go, if you go, to, I, I have links on my website to a bunch of mathematical help websites. If you go down far enough, let me show you. Of course, you could just Google this anyway, and um, it is true you could use like Wolfram Alpha to do to solve these problems, but I'm I am partial to. This one right here, number three on my list of links to, of websites that do the math for you, right here. Because this one, it's called Linear Algebra Toolkit. If I go click on the third thing right here, transforming matrix to a reduced row echelon form, right there. Um, so this one we're working right now, it's got three rows and four columns. Three rows, four columns. And then I just put the numbers in. So what are my numbers? I got myself a 4, a 3, a 1, oops, 1, minus 17, um, 1, 
minus 3, 2, minus 4, and 11, minus 2. Now, how many of you guys were taught row reduction in high school? I'm curious. One? Any, anybody else remember adding matrices with numbers in them? Another? Right, so what this website shows you is actually all of the row reductions needed to reduce this matrix. So, let's, so this actually tells you that what you can do is you can take the box of numbers that's the coefficient matrix and you can do these row, row operations on them and you can systematically replace the matrix that you have with a simpler matrix. These, all of these steps correspond to either adding equations, relabeling equations, or multiplying an equation by a number. None of those change the solution set. So the solution set of each matrix that you get to here is the same as the solution set to the original one. But the thing is, after you're done with all your row reduction, you get to this. The final matrix is this. And what, what system of equations does this correspond to? See, if my matrix here corresponds to the system of equations which I've covered up with this, you know, like the first row is 4x plus 3y plus z equals to minus 17, right? So this works out to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 3, minus 1, minus 2, right? So what does this matrix mean? This matrix translates to the equations x equals to minus 3, y equals to minus 1, z equals to minus 2, which is precisely what we found with blood, sweat, and tears here for the last 10 minutes, right? These are hard problems, aren't they? Three equations and three unknowns is no joke, right? Don't try to do these if you're distracted. You must this must be the sole focus of your attention and it would be best if you worked these with somebody else so you can kind of check midstream if you're on the same page or not because like this is a hard problem it, it just is um, it's pretty much as hard as it gets in here so any questions next up we have you know um, we have problems which are like finding parabolas through a given triple of points and um, then we have some problems on solving systems of nonlinear equations. So that's what I'll talk about Friday. I know not all of you will be here. What happens after break? Quiz on Monday, right? What if you're not here on Monday because of a snowstorm? Let's be optimistic. So one thing is, um, I do, there is another section after this, right? If you, for whatever reason, travel plans, whatever, miss this class, you could come and join us in the later section to take the quiz, all right? If that fails, you could also show up here tomorrow morning, um, Tuesday morning at 8.15 to take the quiz. Those are kind of your only options though, um, unless you're taking the testing center, which is another story, but you pretty much need to do that because I, I need to have the quiz done early that week so I can grade it, get it back to you because your test is at the end of the week. We don't have a full week between the quiz and the test just because of the end of the semester schedule. So just a warning, all right? Try to take the quiz. Have a good break if you're not coming back Friday.